Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Last time, we talked about the various kinds of religions, the kinds that reject the idea of God, the kinds that make no reference to God at all, and the kinds that accept the God concept. We also proved that with the exception of Christianity, all of them reject or deny some provable truths. The next question is more complicated. There are over 40,000 groups that call themselves Christian. How many of them can be completely right? Now, obviously, when you have multiple groups of people all disagreeing with one another, there's always the chance that all of them could be wrong. That's always a possibility. However, there's one other possibility, too. The possibility that one could be right. In episode one, we talked about how truth is always objective. This means that the truth is contained within the object you're talking about. If you make a claim, that claim is true or false based on whether it conforms to objective reality. Because of this, when two people make contradictory claims, which can't possibly be reconciled with one another, only one of those claims at most can be right. For example, let's say that Bob thinks chicken eggs are blue. Susan thinks they're white. In this case, Susan is right and Bob is wrong. On the other hand, sometimes both are right, because their claims don't contradict. For example, if Bob thinks that some eggs are blue, and Susan thinks that some are white. In this case, both are right. Some birds do lay blue eggs. Both can also be wrong. For example, if Susan thinks chicken eggs are red, and Bob thinks they're blue. Neither one of those claims conforms to reality, so both are wrong. In the case of Christianity, we're dealing with a choice between example 1 and 3. For about the first thousand years of Christianity, there was only one church, and then in 1054, a split happened, and suddenly there were more than one, making slightly different but still very contradictory claims. Then, in 1517, another split happened, much bigger than any other. Literally millions of people split off into thousands of different groups, each making their own claims about reality. That splintering and fragmenting has continued to this day. In fact, more than half of all Christian groups materialized in the last 50 years or so. On top of this, the different claims made by these groups are pretty big. Some say that all you need is faith in order to get to heaven. Some say all you need is to say a few words. Some say that if you believe at one point, you can never go to hell. And others think that's a ridiculous claim. Some say there's a purgatory, and others say it's impossible. Stop! I don't really think we need to hear any more to draw our first conclusions, namely, that the different Christian groups are divided by completely incompatible claims. Because of this, we know that only one of these groups can possibly be right about everything, and that teaches us something right off the bat. Quite a few groups of Christians today distinguish themselves by claiming that all Christians can get along and share in one another's beliefs and ceremonies, by treating all Christian beliefs equally. Every group that does this is automatically wrong, because basic logic tells us that when two belief systems conflict, only one can possibly be right. It'd be different if it was a disagreement on whether to wear red or blue, whether to eat chocolate or vanilla. Things like that are about customs and human decisions, which are largely up to the individual humans. But if I claim the world is round and you claim it's flat, only one of us can be right. The same is true here. There can only be one church that has it right, distinguished by its united system of belief. On top of that, there's one more thing to consider. Christianity is the only religion in the world that believes its founder is God himself. But many Christian groups came into existence very recently and therefore have no visible connection to Jesus, who all Christians acknowledge as God. There is only one belief system, to my knowledge, which has been used to defend this. Sola Scriptura. Sola Scriptura is a relatively simple belief to understand. It means scripture alone, the claim that the Bible contains everything that people need to know, and can be properly interpreted by anyone, that it invariably leads people to the truth. For the sake of getting at the truth myself, therefore, I decided to put Sola Scriptura to the same logic test that I used on scientism and skepticism. Is it consistent? You see, if Sola Scriptura is correct, if everything you need to know is contained in the scriptures, then surely that will also be contained in the scriptures. So I went over the Bible looking for a chapter or a verse that outlined the principles of Sola Scriptura. There wasn't any. I've talked with a few friends about this and had 2 Timothy 3.16 pointed out to me. It reads, All scripture is inspired by God and useful for refuting error, for guiding people's lives, and teaching them to be upright. Now, this verse really only makes three claims. First, it says that God is responsible for Scripture. Secondly, because we know that God cannot produce lies, it follows that Scripture is true. However, the only other thing this verse says is that the Scriptures are useful for helping people to become righteous. It doesn't say they're sufficient. Furthermore, I found a couple of verses that seem to refute Sola Scriptura. In the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, beginning at verse 27, Philip is running along and he runs into a man from Ethiopia who is reading the book of Isaiah as he rides in a chariot. Verses 30 and 31 say, When Philip ran up, he heard him reading Isaiah the prophet, and asked, 
Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How could I, unless I have someone to guide me? So he urged Philip to get in and sit by his side. Now, if scripture were sufficient, the Ethiopian would have been able to guide himself in understanding it. Still, this verse only sort of implies that sola scripture is wrong. It doesn't state it outright. I found the outright statement, however, in the second letter of St. Peter, chapter 3, verse 16. It reads, He makes this point, too, in his letters as a whole, wherever he touches on these things. In all his letters, there are, of course, some passages which are hard to understand, and these are the ones that uneducated and unbalanced people distort, in the same way as they distort the rest of Scripture, to their own destruction. Now, if sola scriptura were correct, there certainly wouldn't be anything in the Scriptures refuting it. But there is something in the Scriptures refuting it. Therefore, it, and those who subscribe to it, must be wrong. There's also one last thing to consider, however, about this whole sola scriptura thing. Where in the Scriptures does it say which books are considered Scripture? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.